Mr. Philip Ajale as he worships with us. Praise the Lord and celebrate the Lord as he comes. It's a blessing to have you here, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you wave your right hand unto the Holy Ghost? Just wave your right hand unto the Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living. Is the whole Holy Ghost, the scepter of the King of Kings. He is the whole Holy Ghost, the spirit of the age to come. Bringing everything in obedience to Christ. Is the whole He's the Holy Ghost, the scepter of a king of kings. He's the whole Holy Ghost, the spirit of the age to come, bringing everything in obedience to God. Swallow your pride. Tonight, come to the school of the Spirit. Don't you know? In his arms is a key to eternal life. It is a little here, a little there, until the day is come. Bringing everything in obedience to Christ. Swallow your pride. Tonight, come to the school of the Spirit. Don't you know in his arms is a key to eternal life. It's a little here and a little there until the day is gone. Bringing everything in obedience to Christ. Realigning everything in obedience. Changing everything in obedience to Christ. 
swallow your pride. Tonight, come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his arms is a key to eternal life? There's a little here and a little there until the day is gone. Bringing everything in obedience to Christ. Realigning Changing everything in obedience to Christ. Realigning everything in obedience to Christ. Oh, is the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Lord. Is the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings? He's the whole Spirit of the age to come. Bring
the King of glory, the King to, to. Oh, Yahweh, yeah. Check two, one. Two, one, two. Oh, the Lord, the Lord. The King, the King. Oh, Yahweh, yeah. So one more time. The Lord of hosts, the Lord, the King, Yahweh, yeah. So will it see From the rising of from the to the setting of the sun. Oh, your name, your name. I don't know. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp. I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning till the blood. Keep me burning. Keep me the oil in my lamp. I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning too. There 
There is a place my heart yearns for Lord. There is a place that I'm yearning for. It is a place where deep calls to the deep. I am overwhelmed by this deep longing, Lord. Take me, Lord, to that secret place. Take me by the hand to the holy place. And let me see your face and your glory. Let me know you more. God, I will know you. Can I lift up your hands wherever you are? Lift your hands, everybody. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Everybody. I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you. Say it again, open the eyes of my heart, open the eyes of my heart, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to, Lord, I want to see you, say to see you high, to see Pour out your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. Wanna see you high and lift up, mm. shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we. Yes, we cry, holy, holy, holy. Yes, we cry, oh. We join the 24 years, we cry, oh. Yes, we cry, holy, holy, holy. Hey. And we Someone turn to your neighbor and say, this week is my week. Turn to your other neighbor and say, tonight is my night. So I just want to say thank you for coming. Welcome to um, Holy Ghost Festival Ghana, our very first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My name is Mariah Achanya. My husband is Evangelist Joseph Achanya. <laughs> so this event, thank God, is hosted by Mega Harvest, which was founded by my husband. Um, <laughs> we, Mega Harvest has a vision and a mission to announce Jesus to the nation. 
And with that, we travel across the world, um, the United States of America. Um, we've been to Malawi, Botswana, Ghana, of course, Nigeria. And we go around telling people the good news of the gospel, that Jesus loves them, that Jesus will heal them, will save them even today as he did in Bible days. So with that, um, my, my husband and I, we travel, we go about, and we see mighty miracles. We see the hand of God touch people. We see miracles, signs, and wonders every single where we go because the Holy Spirit is with us. So with, with thankfulness and appreciation to the Lord, I can say from the five years that we've had Mega Harvest, our soul count has just almost reached 115,000 people. All glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to show a video um, of what we've just done. We did a crusade, um, actually four crusades last year. We went to four cities, three countries, in only 28 days. That sounds like a lot of work, and it is, but with the Holy Spirit, you can do anything. So thank God for that. And now, just this last week, we went to um, two cities in Nigeria, and we saw over 55,000 salvations. Um, attendance and salvations were very, very high. Thank the Lord. So let's go ahead and show that video, and then... I will introduce my husband. Maybe we won't show that video today. <laughs> So please stand and help me welcome. Give a, a shout, a praise, a hallelujah. Evangelist Joseph Achanya. Come on, Ghana, shout hallelujah. Come on, you can do it better. Shout hallelujah. You can make it better. Shout hallelujah. Give Jesus the loudest clap and shout and praise you've ever given anyone before let Jesus know you are here Ghana give Jesus a shout a leap of joy a praise something will happen in Ghana tonight hallelujah hallelujah Maybe you have come tonight. There's a delay in my sound. There's a delay. So it's double in a hall. So just fix it. Maybe you have come tonight wondering, what is Holy Ghost Festival? Is it a teaching meeting? Maybe you've come tonight wondering, what is Holy Ghost Festival? Is it a healing service? Maybe you've come tonight wondering, what is Holy Ghost Festival? Is it a deliverance service? Is it a prophetic service? I'll tell you what Holy Ghost Festival is. In Luke chapter 4 verse 18, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. Holy Ghost Festival is first a preaching service. Then he said, he has sent me to announce deliverance. Holy Ghost Festival is a deliverance service. Then he said, to open the eyes of the blind. 
Holy Ghost festival is a healing service. And then he said to announce that captives will be set free and to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. Holy Ghost festival is also a prophetic service. How many of you are ready tonight? How many are ready tonight? Lift up your hands. Holy Ghost, can I get the worship team just for five minutes? Just pray in the spirit right where you are. Pray in the spirit, Ghana. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Kotama Yalama Shota. Come on, do it better. Do it better. Do it better. Do it better. Kutama Yenama Shota. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Lift up your two hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Give my soul. Oh, Holy Ghost. Fire in my bones. Oh, Holy Ghost. The power in Pray in the Holy Ghost. You can do it better. You can do it better. Suta mayala makasato. Kila mayoko sota. Ye bakata matana motona ye kebaratana. He kabakata na maya. O tobere ke tebo rokoto. O kobere ke tebo yosoto. Makabata na makate ke bosoto. You and I, you and I, would change the world. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. You and I, you and I, would change the world. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. You and I, would change the world. Lift your two hands up. Just pray the Spirit with your two hands up. Come on, Ghana, I can hear you pray the Holy Ghost. You can do it better. You can do it better. Out of your belly flows rivers. It's a Holy Ghost meeting. It's not a denominational service. It's a Holy Ghost service. O paradana. A paradena basanta. A paradena basanta. Ye boko breke It's a Holy Ghost meeting. It's a Holy Ghost service. Rua Baba Yekamana Bakasu. Urua Bakatebo Yosoto. Tanama Akataba Yakata. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Holy Spirit, we dedicate this meeting to you. Holy Spirit, this meeting is named after you. Have your way. Do what only you can do. Spirit of the living God, move freely. Spirit of the living God, take total control. Have complete dominion in this house. We give you room to move. We give you room to move. Let this meeting be a Holy Ghost and power night. Let tonight be a Holy Ghost and a power night. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Father. We give you praise and glory. And we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus a better hand clap. 
Make it louder. Make it better. Make it louder. You can do better. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't sound like you know what is coming. Something is coming. Something is coming. I am I am a Makatana. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, Apostle Michael Ropo is in the house. <laughs> Apostle Michael Ropo is in the house. Please celebrate him, Ghana. He's here. Celebrate him. Celebrate him, Ghana. Oh, yes, you can do better. Celebrate him. No, no, no. One more time. You can do better. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to do the introduction of the service. And then we're going to let the lion out of the cage. <laughs> to come and roar. <laughs> Ghana, you are not ready for this weekend. I say you are not ready. <laughs> Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, hallelujah, I have some special friends with me, Evangelist Kofi Achampong, all the way from United States of America, all the way from you, please help me celebrate him, help me celebrate him, put your hands better, hallelujah, thank you for coming. And then I have a friend of mine. The first time I ever came to Ghana, how many years ago was that? Uh, about, about five years ago, the first time I was ever invited to preach in Ghana, I was invited by Pastor David Dua from Rich Heaven Church. Which, uh, please help me, Ghana, celebrate him. He's here with his wife, Pastor Lydia. Welcome. God bless you. God bless you. You can be seated. Celebrate the ministry of Philip Atzali. Help me celebrate him. Very quickly tonight, just help me turn to the book of Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 13 from verse 1. Do we have scriptures on the screen? Are you there? Is everyone there? Or you didn't come with your Bibles? Does Ghana have Bibles? Or should we start smuggling Bibles to Ghana? <laughs> Acts 13 verse 1. It said, Among the prophets and the teachers of the church at Antioch of Syria were Barnabas, Simon, Lucia, Manian, the companion of King Herod, and Saul, verse 2. One day, as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, that's the kind of meeting we're about to have. The Holy Spirit said, everyone said the Holy Ghost? Said. Talk to me, said the Holy Ghost? Said. He said the Holy Ghost said, appoint me Barnabas and Saul for the special work in which I have called them. Verse 3. So after fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. Then verse 4, he said, So Barnabas and Saul were sent out by the Holy Ghost. So Barnabas and Saul were sent out by the Holy Ghost. Now, it sounds like a contradiction. Few verses or just the very verse before that, the Bible says the prophets and the teachers laid their hands on them and sent them. The prophets laid their hands on them and sent them. Then the very next verse says, and they've been sent by the Holy Ghost. And they've been sent by the Holy Ghost. Listen, what is going to happen here? What will happen in this meeting? 
What is in my spirit for this meeting? I'll tell you. I see a rocket, Apostle. I see a rocket. And if you know anything about the launching of a rocket, a, ro a rocket can never launch without fire underneath it. It takes fire to launch a rocket. I see a fire that will hit ground here in the next three days of this meeting. I see a fire that will touch ground here that will launch many people across the nations of the earth. I see global apostles and global prophets and global teachers that will rise out of this meeting that will be launched to the nations that will be launched to China and to Asia and to Spain and to Europe and to America and they're being sent by the Holy Ghost. See, I'm sent. Come on, see, I'm sent. We were not sent by a denomination. Although the denomination laid hands on them and sent them, they were not sent by denomination. The Bible said they were sent by the Holy Ghost. Do you recognize that you were sent? Every book that Paul wrote in the epistles, he began the book Every book he wrote, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 1, Romans 1 verse 1, Philippians 1 verse 1. Every epistle that Paul wrote, he began by saying, I'm Paul and I am an apostle of Jesus. You know what an apostle means? It means a sent one. Every book that Paul wrote, he began by saying, I'm Paul and I'm sent. You know, every chapter in the book of John, almost every chapter in the book of John, Jesus said, as the Father has sent me. Almost every chapter in the whole book of John, Jesus said, I'm sent. The Father sent me. I'm sent. How about John? John chapter 1 verse 6, the Bible began to say, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. There was a man that was sent by God. And he said his name was John. John wrote the book of John and John said that because he recognized that he was sent. Everywhere we've gone to around the world. Every mass crusade. Every mass crusade we've done around the world. Everywhere we've preached around the world. The first night of the meeting, I began to tell the people, or I begin by telling the people, I've come from God to you. It's important. I've come from God. God sent me. There was a man sent from God whose name was Preacher J. There was a man sent from God whose name was Apostle Mike. There was a man sent from God and it's your name. Say I'm sent. Say I'm sent by the Holy Ghost. Say I'm sent by the Holy Ghost. Now Matthew 20. Matthew chapter 20 from verse 1. Matthew 20. Watch this. He said, what is the kingdom of heaven? It's like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. And he agreed to pay them a normal way, day wage. And he sent them out to work. Verse 3. At 9 o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace. And he saw some people standing around and doing nothing. Verse 4. And so he had them telling them he will pay them whatsoever is right for them at the end of the day. So at 9 o'clock, he came out and... He sent them. Come, Ephraim, come stand there. It's nine o'clock. At nine o'clock, Jesus came out and he looked around and he said, what, what, what are you doing, I don't? 
come work in my harvest field at 9 o'clock. So he hired them, telling them he would pay them. So they went to work in the vineyard. At noon, and again at 3 o'clock, he said the same thing. Come to me, please. He came out again at 12 o'clock at noon, and he said, why are you standing idle? Come walk in. He said, what do you mean I'm unemployed? Unemployed? Is that even a statement? I'm unemployed. Young people say I'm unemployed. The Bible said the harvest is plenty, the laborers are few. At 12 o'clock. Come, somebody, come to me, please. If there's anybody, come. Then he came out again at 3 o'clock. Come stand, come stand. At 3 o'clock. And he said, come walk in my harvest field. At 3 o'clock. And at 5 o'clock, the 6, that afternoon, he was in the town again. And he saw some more people standing around. And he asked them, why haven't you been walking today? And they replied, because no one hired us. And the landowner told them, then go out and join the others in the vineyard and walk. Can I get 5 o'clock? Come. 5 o'clock. And you stand there. In case you're wondering, he's not my twin brother. Now, the Bible said at 9 o'clock, at 12 o'clock, at 3 o'clock, and at 5 o'clock. You know, when I look at this scripture, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a relay race. You know what a relay race is? How many of you have seen a relay race? A relay race is the race where people run and then a baton is passed. Usually in a relay race, there's usually four men on a relay race. Jesus came 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 5 o'clock. Usually there's four people in a relay race. And the strategy of a relay race is very simple. The coach in the relay race, he finds one of his very best runner, and then he puts them at the beginning of the race. And that is why it looks like when the book of Acts began, or when the church was better, it began with so much power, and so much force, and so much energy, because some of God's best men were at the beginning of the race. Some of God's best men. At nine o'clock, we had men like Paul. A man who went to Ephesus, and in two years, Ephesus, an idol worshiping nation, a thick idol worshiping nation, in two years, he had planted the largest church in Ephesus. And the Bible said, so mightily grew the word in Ephesus, and it prevailed. Because one of God's best men was there. At 9 o'clock, we had Philip. One man, the Bible said in Acts chapter 8, one man went to Samaria and the whole nation was on their knees. I know nowadays everyone talks about apostolic invasion. Apostolic invasion. Someone goes to a place and leads prayer for 12 hours and calls it apostolic invasion. The Bible, go read what the Bible calls an apostolic invasion. When Philip went to Samaria, that's an apostolic invasion. When Paul went to Ephesus, that's apostolic invasion. You have men like Peter, Philip, Paul, some of God's best men, and the, the goal of God's best man or one of God's best man was to run so fast and to give the rest the advantage. So the baton then passed from some of God's best men and then it went to the 12 o'clock. Now usually in a relay race, two of the weakest men are put in the middle. And that is why it looked like the church passed the baton and then we went into the dark ages of the church where it looks like the church lost its power. The church went into the closet. The church went into hiding. The church 
was no more as powerful as it was. It was no more celebrated as it was. It was no more talked about as it was because the baton was passed to some of the weakest men in the middle. So the church became invisible. There was no power. It became quiet. There was no takeover. The baton was passed huh? from 12 o'clock until 3 o'clock. Usually, this guy is a bit better than this guy. And so, they started to see glimpses of an awakening. Glimpses. And that's what the church called the revival. We started to hear of the voice of healing. Lester Sumrall. Aldo Blue Shambach. We started to hear voices that was rising again and it was the voice of an awakening. It was awakening a dead church. It was the voice of revival and his assignment was to awaken a dead church. So we saw men like Bonke, Lester Summer, the voice of healing, T.L. Osborne, great men and women, Smith Wigglesworth, and we saw them and their job was to awaken the church. Now the problem is that the whole church has stopped to celebrate this man, this man, and this man thinking that these are God's best men. But the strategy of a relay race is very simple. The coach usually puts one of his best men in the middle, two of the weakest men in the middle, and then he puts his very best runner as the last man of the race. The best man as his last man. God's last man is God's best man. So we thought as a body of Christ that we've seen revival. We've seen a move of God. We've experienced mighty power. And I said to the church, if you think you've seen power, just wait till after Holy Ghost Conference. Till after Holy Ghost Festival. Where some of God's best men, some of God's best women are arising from this meeting. I said, if the church thinks it has seen power yet, let it wait till your arising happens. Because God's last man is God's best man. Were you not there or were you not aware at the wedding of Cana when the king of the wedding said, Orders bring their best wine first, but you have a strategy for preserving your best wine for the last wine. He said, Orders have a strategy. They brought their best first. We've seen the best of the world, we've seen the best of everyone. But we've not seen the best of the church yet. We've not seen the best of God's men yet. We celebrated Bonky and Tealos, but which are worthy of celebrating. But wait until after Holy Ghost Festival. Because I see men and women in this house who will be launched out like a missile. And will land across nations. I'm telling you, I came to Ghana to launch a missile. I came to Ghana to launch a missile of men and women that will launch across nations. God's best man is God's last man. Now, this is the problem. Listen to this. This is the problem. The problem is, when he was called at 9 o'clock, he had enough time. Because it was going to end at 6 o'clock. So he had how many hours left? Huh? From 9 o'clock to 6 p.m. So how many hours? Huh? From 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. is 9 hours. He had 9 hours left. But he was fine. He was called at 12. He had six hours to walk. It's good. He was called at three. He had only three hours. And so you could feel some urgency when the church got to this point. And 
this is the problem. God's last man has one hour only. God's last man has one hour left. One more hour. That is why there is such an urgency in your spirit that you cannot understand. There is such a burden. That's why you can't sleep at night. That's why you are awake all night praying. Because there's such an urgency in your spirit. That's why you've been fasting. That's why you've been praying. Because God's last man has one hour left. One hour. One hour. That's what the Bible says in the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5. It said, beloved, let us not sleep as others do. Why? Because God's last man has one hour left. One. In the month of August, me and my wife, we went to four countries, four cities, three countries in 28 days. Five night each. Why? God's last man has one hour left. We can't sleep like others do. We can't sleep like civilians do. We are not civilians. Civilians don't take over. When the government wants to take over a nation, they don't send civilians. They send military. That's what we are military people here. We are not civilians. Civilians don't take over. Only military men take over. We're not civilians. We are military. We have one hour left. As a military man, fasting can start any day, any time. Because as a military man, you're always conscious a war can begin any day, any time. All night can start any day, any time because we are not civilians. It's a beloved, let us not sleep like others do. There is a military mentality that you must have. There is a one hour left mentality that you must have to take over. Now here's my message for this whole meeting. This is just an introduction. How come that the greatest or God's best man has seen no result to God's first man? Listen, how come this is God's best man, this is God's last man, and when you put his ministry side by side, God's first man, you can't even compare. We can't compare biblical prophets and biblical prophets today and prophets today. If you put your ministry side by side, the book of can it stand the test? Huh? If you put your apostolic ministry side by side, the book of Acts can it stand the test? If you put your prophetic ministry side by side, the prophetic ministry of Agabus, can it stand the test? If you put your evangelistic ministry, you are called an evangelist. If you put your evangelistic ministry side by side, Philip's ministry, can we compare? Huh? Can we compare? Let's put your missionary, you say you're a missionary, huh? Let's put your missionary ministry side by side. Paul, who was a missionary. Paul, first missionary journey, second missionary journey. Let's put your missionary ministry side by side. Paul's missionary ministry and let's compare. Would he stand the test? We say this is God's best man, but we have not seen God's best. my assignment in Ghana is to give you three keys every night. Three keys to the book of Acts. I've read it. I went through the book of Acts. I have a book of Acts ministry. Three keys to a book of Acts ministry. Three keys to a miracle, signs, and wonders ministry. 
three keys to a Holy Ghost ministry that when we bring your ministry and put it beside God's first man, it can now stand the test. How many of you are ready? You want it? Acts chapter 4. Just stay right there. Acts chapter 4. From verse 29. Acts 4, 29. Three keys to the book of Acts. I'll give you one tonight. Acts chapter 4. From verse 29. Are you there? Now this was the apostles praying. They said, And now, O Lord, behold their threats. Give us your servant great boldness in the preaching of your word. Everybody say the word. Talk to me, say the word. He said, give us great boldness in the preaching of your word. Verse 13. He says, stretch out your hands with healing power and may signs and wonders be done through the name. Everybody say the name. Say the word. Say the name. He said, let signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Verse 31. It says, and after this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Say the Holy Ghost. Say the Holy Ghost. And they preached the word of God with boldness. Three keys to a book of Acts ministry. Number one, the gospel. Everybody say the gospel. Talk to me, Ghana. Say the gospel. Number two, the name. Say the name. Number three, the Holy Ghost. Say the Holy Ghost. Let's go one more time. Number one, the gospel. Say the gospel. Number two, the name. Say the name. Number three, the Holy Ghost. Say the Holy Ghost. Well, let's do one more time. Number one, say the gospel. The gospel. The first secret of the ministry in the book of Acts was trusting the power of the gospel. They trusted in the power of the gospel. They trusted in the power of the gospel. So Paul started writing in Romans chapter 1 verse 16. It says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Are there people here tonight who are not ashamed of the gospel? Are there people in Ghana who are not ashamed of the power in the gospel? Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. For the gospel is the power. Say the gospel is the power. Talk to me, Ghana. Say the gospel is the power. Where is the power? Where is the power? Where is the power? So if I want to see power in my ministry, I don't just pray the power down. I preach the power out of the gospel. We don't pray the power down. We preach the power out. The gospel, you see, when we travel around the world, people cannot understand our ministry. They cannot, they cannot. They see the miracles I told them. The last crusade we just finished, we were there, I'm telling you, some of the most amazing testimonies that you have ever heard if I tell the stories. They see the miracles, they see the signs, they see the notable wonders, and they cannot understand our ministry. You are just on the stage talking and miracles are taking place. They can't understand. They're wondering, where is the magic? I say, people travel from around the world. They come to our crusade and they're trying to catch us in our magic. They're trying to find out, where is the trick? Where is the magic? Let's see what happens when he goes near them. What does he do? How does he touch them? What do, they're trying to catch us in a trick or in something that we are doing. They can't understand how come a man stands on the stage and is speaking and signs and wonders are taking place. Then they conclude, wonderful evangelist. I say wonderful evangelist. No, wonderful gospel. Powerful gospel. 
There's a wonderful evangelist. I say, no, wonderful gospel, powerful gospel, anointed gospel. They can't understand the ministry. They can't understand the miracles. So they say, wonderful evangelist, powerful evangelist. I say, no, powerful gospel. The gospel is the power. Everybody said, the gospel is the power. One more time, say the gospel is the power. That's where the power is. The power is in the announcement. The power of the gospel is in the announcement. The Bible says one day, Luke chapter 5, verse 17, one day as Jesus was teaching, the power of the Lord was present to heal. There is a teaching or there is a preaching that produces miracles. There is a preaching. There is a kind of preaching that produces miracles. In Acts chapter 10, Peter was in the house of Cornelius. And the Bible says, as Peter was preaching, in somebody's house, it was a group of people that gathered like this. While Peter yet spake, as Peter was still talking, while Peter was still preaching, the Bible says, the Holy Ghost fell upon all that heard the message. The Holy Ghost fell upon all that heard the message. That's why I say, if I can get their ears, I can get them healed. The Holy Ghost fell upon anyone who heard what he was saying. If I can get their ears. The question, listen now, the question has never been Never, wherever we've gone to around the world, the question has never been, will miracles happen or not? It has never been the question, Apostle. The question has never been whether miracles will happen or not. We're going to Europe in May, from Finland to Netherlands, five nights each. The question is not whether miracles will happen or not. The question has always been, can I get their ears long enough to plant the seed of the gospel? That's the only question. Can I get their ears? Because the gospel is the power. Everybody say the gospel. Talk to me, say the gospel is the power. Talk to me across, say the gospel is the power. One more time, say the gospel is the power. Last week, we just finished the crusade, and we're on the crusade tour, and we finished the first crusade five nights, and thousands and thousands of people, the first night of the crusade, was over 5,000 people, thousands and thousands of people had come, had preached morning, night, morning, night, run around, meet people, and after the first crusade, I was very tired. And we had only one day break to travel to the next city. When we were traveling to the next city, on our way there, the Lord said to me, trust the gospel. Trust. Trust it. The apostles trusted this gospel. When Philip went to Samaria, he didn't go there with another message. The Bible said, Philip went to Samaria and there he preached Christ. Acts chapter 14, when Paul was in Lystra, the Bible said, Paul was preaching a man that was born lame was sitting in front and the Bible said Paul went to Lystra and there he preached the gospel. Paul was preaching, a man was in front, he was born lame, never walked. As Paul was preaching, do you see? The power in the book of Acts was always in the preaching. Philip preached. Paul in Lystra Preach the gospel. Peter in the house of Cornelius. Preach. There is a preaching that produces power. There is only one message, Ghana. 
that God has vowed for his own name's sake to confirm with signs and wonders and is the gospel. There's only one message that God has vowed that I will confirm it wherever I preach with signs and wonders. The gospel. Not another message. The gospel is the power of God. God has vowed. He's put his integrity behind the gospel. And he says, you announce it, I will confirm it. You announce, I'll confirm. I tell people everywhere we go, I say, my job tonight is to preach. Your job is to believe. God's job is to confirm. That's the recipe for a miracle. I preach, you believe, God confirms. I preach, you believe, God answers. That's the recipe. And what a lot of people don't realize is that miracles, signs, wonders, the gift of the Holy Ghost are all confirmation of a message. Miracles are witnesses. They are all confirmation. So we were driving to the city and the Lord said to me, trust the power of the gospel. Trust the power. When we arrived there the first night of the crusade, we got there and then there was another thousands of people who had come. And then I thought, we're in a crusade. I just finished a crusade. We're going to continue a crusade. So I had my wife. I said, go up just before me, say hello, and then welcome me. My wife went there, and while she was talking, no one was answering. There was no, no one responding. I said, what's happening? I said, no, they, they need an evangelist. <laughs> so then I went up myself, and I took the microphone, and I said, Shout hallelujah. You know a crusade crowd, the crowd is supposed to rumble with hallelujah. I'm telling you the response was hallelujah. <laughs> and I realized that, oh, this is not the crusade crowd. This is a church crowd. In the, in the crusade, when you are preaching, you are quoting Bible verses, no one even has a Bible to open it. When we were there, I said, open to Romans 1.16. The people had notes, Bible, open. I said, this is different. <laughs> the people had notes, Bible, they were writing. And I'm telling you, I'd prepared the crusade message. I'd, I'd, I was ready. When I got there, I was preaching. It was as if God had left me. <laughs> it, was, it was as if the spirit had departed. We were preaching, preaching. There was no response. Preaching. But God said to me, trust the gospel. I was preaching, preaching. No answer. The gospel is the power. The gospel is the power. I was preaching, preaching. There was no response. And then I said, look, for the first time in my life, I preached the crusade for 20 minutes only. The message was not heated. So after 20 minutes, I said, let's do the altar call. If you're not born again, if you never, even the altar call was a struggle. <laughs> we did the altar call. I mean, the people were not coming. And then they came to the front. And I thought to myself, we are failed. All right. I'll just pray for the sick, drop the microphone, enter my car, and go to my hotel. And I said, place your hands where you are suffering. Place your hands where you have the pain. If you are blind, place your hands on your eyes. If you cannot walk, place your hands on your leg. If you have problems in your spine, place your hands on your spinal cord. I said, place your hand. I was so tired. I was leaning on the pulpit. And I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, that all may know tonight that the gospel is true. That all may know tonight that the gospel is true. And that Jesus is alive. Confirm the message with signs and wonders. That all may know that the gospel is true and that Jesus is alive. Confirm the message. When I was done praying, apostle, the moment I was done praying, now I was going to escape because I was not expecting anything to happen. When I was done praying, I was about to pull down the mic and escape. A man lifted up two crutches and began to jump. He lifted two crutches, began to jump. Another military man, there was a military man there and five years ago, five years ago, he had an accident and the leg broke. So he had the cane and he would lean on the cane for one side. 
when the power hit him, he threw the stick, began to do press up. He was doing press up on the ground. Suddenly, the dead crowd began to jump and shout and scream. I'm telling you, the gospel is the power. You can trust the gospel. The gospel is the power. You can trust it. You can trust it. One man lifted two crutches. His bone was broken for many years. Never mended. Began to walk. The other one, another crutch. When I saw it, I'm telling you, when the military man began to run, strange sights, the crowd was running and following him behind. <laughs> the crowd was running and following behind. I said, the gospel is the power. Listen, the third night of the crusade, we got there and I was ready to preach. When I began preaching, I was preaching the simplicity of the gospel. Now listen to this. If you make the gospel simple, the result will be profound. If you make the gospel profound, the result will be simple. If you make the gospel simple, the result will be profound. The third night of the crusade, we were beyond the state preaching, and I prepared a simple message creation, deception, redemption. That was my message. Creation. God made man and woman. Well, Adam and Eve, man and woman, made in the image of God. Fine, well, walking, talking. No sickness, no disease, deception, sin came into the garden. Man fell, sickness came, disease came, redemption, Christ went to the cross, died and paid. And paid, that's all I said. Creation, deception, redemption. When I was preaching, remember, it was a church crowd, they've heard that story many times. They've heard that story many times that when I was talking, it had lost its power. It's like everyone just looking at you. When are you getting to the message? The whole crowd was just looking. Creation, deception, redemption. Redemption. The greatest honor of my life is to be called the preacher of redemption. That's the greatest honor of my life. The greatest honor of my life is to be called the redemptive preacher. A preacher of redemption. Creation, deception, redemption. The crowd was looking at me. I thought to myself, nothing will happen here today. Nothing. The people were staring, looking at me. It was a message they've had. Creation, deception, redemption. When I was done preaching, trust the power. You know, I've said to myself, many of you have heard me say it. I've said to myself, if I ever get to India, or if I ever get to China, or to Russia, or to Pakistan, or to Iran, or Iraq, and all of the nations that use all of their governmental power to stop the gospel from entering in, I said to them, I want an interview. Put me on TV. I want to ask you one question. If I ever get to Iran or Iraq, I said, I want an interview. Put me on TV because I want to ask you one question. And let's say they get me an interview. The whole nation is listening, and I'm on TV, and I'm going to ask them one question. Why do you believe in the gospel so much? And they will look at me and say, me? We don't believe in the gospel. What are you talking about? We don't believe in what you are saying. It's just a story. It's just a fairy tale. I'll look at it and say, no, no, no. You believe in the gospel so much. They'll say, no, we don't believe in the gospel. I say, no, you believe in the gospel. And why do you believe in the power of the gospel so much? They say, what are you talking about? We don't believe it. We don't believe he died. We don't believe he rose. We don't. I say, no, you do. And they say, what are you saying? And I'm going to say, here's my question. If you don't believe in the power of the gospel, if you think what we are saying is fairy tale, why do you use all of your governmental power to stop us from coming in? If you think the message is empty and there's no power in the message, why do you use all of your governmental power to stop us from coming in? Why not let us loose? Give us five minutes to preach 
and five minutes to pray and you will know that Jesus is alive. I said, let us lose. Give us five minutes to preach. Give us five minutes to pray. Why don't you sell TV airtime to us? If you think it's an empty message, let us loose. Give us a platform. Invite the nation. You know why? Because they know that if they let us in, in two years, the whole nation will be on their knees calling on the name. Because there's power in the gospel. I said, let us lose. Let us lose. Give us five minutes to preach. Give us five minutes to pray. That's all we ask, ten minutes. Five to preach, five to pray. When I stood there the third night, and I was done preaching, and I said a prayer. People cannot understand this message. They can't. They want something. Where is the thing? Do, do something. Do something. The gospel is the power. The gospel is the power. When I was done preaching, a lady who was from Cameroon and lived in Nigeria because she was a refugee there, and three years ago, three years ago, she had broken her spine. And when she broke her spine, she had no access for surgery because she was a refugee. So she had to write letters to the UN to respond. And for three years, she's been writing to the UN and no response. For three years, writing to the UN. And every time she went back to the hospital, there was no response. So the spine broke and one of her legs was facing forward and the other leg was facing backward. And so she would walk like this. Now she said, when the bosses came to pick us up for the crusade, I lived very close, but I had to leave my house two hours before the time for the bus because it would take me two hours to walk from my house to get to the bus. For three years, Paul went to Lystra and there he preached the gospel. That night, when I was done preaching, creation, deception, redemption. I told the people, Jesus paid for you. The prison door is open. That's my message. Jesus paid for you. The prison door is open. You can walk out of your prison. That's the gospel. Jesus paid for you. The prison door is open. You can walk out. I was announcing, Jesus paid for you. The prison door is open. You can rise up and walk. Jesus paid for you. The prison door is open. You can open your eyes and see. Jesus paid for you. The prison door is open. You can rise up and run. I was announcing. Jesus paid. The prison door is open. Suddenly, her name was Lucy. Suddenly, for the first time in three years, Lucy jumped up from the seat. When Lucy jumped up, the legs that faced sideways faced forward and Lucy was walking and running and dancing and jumping. She said, three years, I wrote to the UN, there was no answer. One call on the name. She called on the UN for three years, but one call on the name that's above every other name. The name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. The name of Jesus. Lucy stood up and began to walk. Now, this is it. This is it. Now, this was the strangest thing that happened. Now, there was two ladies. What's their name again? Priscilla and Felicia. There were two ladies, and they looked like twin sisters, who came to the meeting, and 35 years ago, you can take it down a little. 35 years ago, Priscilla and Felicia were blood sisters, and they both became crippled when their parents died. Now, they were crippled that they walked on their knees. That is, you know someone walking on the knees? Two blood sisters walking on the knees. For 35 years, 
35 years. The devil is an oppressor. He's an oppressor. He's a devourer. The Bible calls him the wicked one. Calls him the oppressor. Calls him the devourer. Calls him the corrupt of the human mind. Calls him the old serpent. Calls him the dragon. Two blood sisters walking on their knees. That night, they were both in front there. The gospel. Oh, Ghana, the gospel. Oh, Ghana, the gospel. There's power in the gospel. I said there's power in the gospel. There's power in what we preach. There's power in what we preach. There's power in the message. There's power. This message is backed by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is behind the gospel. The Holy is while Peter was yet preaching, the Holy Ghost was falling. The Holy Ghost is behind the gospel. Both sisters, first time they were sitting down there, Priscilla jumped up first. When Priscilla jumped up, stood up, and began to run, she was running like this. Priscilla, then Felicia saw her sister walking and stood up behind, and both sisters were following each other and walking and running behind each other. There's power, oh. there's power in the gospel. There's power in the gospel. It's a wonderful evangelist. I say no wonderful gospel. Without the blood, there's no fire. Until Jesus first died and shed his blood, the Holy Ghost couldn't come down. Couldn't. Without the blood sacrifice, there was no fire coming down. Without Calvary, there's no Pentecost. Without Calvary, there was no Pentecost. Without the blood, there's no fire. Everyone wants to talk about the fire. Everyone wants to talk about Pentecost, and they forget Calvary, and it is Calvary that brings the power of Pentecost. It is the blood that brings down the fire. Everyone wants to talk about the fire, but it's the blood that brings down the fire. It's Calvary that brings Pentecost. Wonderful gospel. The gospel is the power. You can be seated. The gospel. The gospel is the power. It's like a loaded gun. The gospel is like a loaded gun. Anyone that can pull the trigger can release the power. It's already loaded. The gospel is already loaded with power. The gospel is already loaded with power. It's a loaded gun. Anyone that can pull the trigger can release the power of the gospel. I see anointed men and women that are going to rise up from this meeting. And I'm going to shake all of God. There's enough firepower in this room tonight. I said, There's enough firepower here. I said, There's enough firepower here. I said, There's enough firepower here. There's enough firepower here in this room. There's enough heat here in this room. Heat, huh? There's enough heat here in this room. I said there's enough heat here in this room. One more time, there's enough heat here in this room. There's enough energy here in this room. There's enough fire in Ghana. There's enough fire here. Ghana cannot stand it. The nation cannot withstand it. There's power in the gospel. Ghana is going to shake. The city is going to shake. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see preachers with signs and wonders here. I say, I see preachers with signs and wonders here. 
I see preachers with signs and wonders all over the balcony. I see book of Acts ministers. My God, my God, my God, my God. You can stand up on your feet. You can rise to your feet. Oh, come batana my. Oh, come batana my. Oh, rabatana matana. Lift up your hands, pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, bila 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 te. Bila 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 te. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Nina matana. Mila baratona maya. Monde paradina. Ruka batana. Yes, come on, Philip. In tamanina morotona. In tamanana morokotona. The band, you can just come up. Oh, barasatana. Oh, barasatana. Lift up your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost as loud as you can. Out of your belly flows. Out of your belly flows. Yandi. Yandi. Rande. Rande. Randan, dan, 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 day. Keep hot on no more cotton. Keep hot on no more cotton. Yendeke perete na maya. Out of my belly. Oh, yes. Shall flow rivers. Oh, yes. Rivers of living water. Ia, ia, eh. Oh, kapana na 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 mashata. Out of my belly. Oh, paratana. Shall flow. Thank you, Lord. Is you talk of Lift your hands up. Anointed men and women with a ministry of signs and wonders. I say with a ministry of signs and wonders. God is giving you a ministry of signs and wonders. Rapata namasa katabayata. Kombata namana tonama. Tonight it will come on you. A special grace. A special grace for signs. A special grace for wonders oh my god oh my god oh my god kapatana o tombala nina matana o tombala manina tonas o prende ke tombalinas in kambatone de brakatas pray pray the ministry of signs and wonders a ministry of signs and wonders a ministry of signs and wonders A ministry of signs, a ministry of wonders, notable miracles. You are here. Oh yes, you are here. Holy Ghost, I'm so glad you are here. You are here. You are here.
lift your hands up. Listen, without proofs, we are in trouble. Without proofs, we are in trouble. But with proofs, the devil is in trouble. I said with proofs, the devil is in trouble. Without proofs, we are in trouble. But with proofs, the devil is in trouble. I see men and women here that would terrorize the devil all over Ghana. I see men and women here that are the devil's troubles. When you were here, broken hearts are made. Oh, yes. When you were here, the sick is healed. Oh, yes. When you were here, when you were here. Oh, yes. When you were, Lord, you are here. Lift your right hand toward heaven. He has not come to deliver a lecture. He has come to release power. Paul said, when I came unto you, I did not come with excellency of speech, declaring unto you the testimony of God. I choose to know nothing among you, save Christ and him crucified. My preaching and my teaching were not with enticing words of human wisdom. They were the demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith may be built not on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. He said the gospel is not in words, it's in the demonstration of power. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. I don't know if there are believers in the house tonight. Come on, somebody roar in the spirit. Begin to make declarations. Begin to change things. Begin to shift the vision. The power of God is falling here. The glory of God is descending here. Wherever you are standing, open your spirit. This is the hour of visitation. Mera Jacobina, Sanka Bata, Maradona, Sabao, Iato, Mera Jacobina, Baka Tos, Bata Kato, Baka Tina, Rakato, Fatali, Fatali.
Thank you, Lord. We are out of time. So I just want to do three things. Listen, there's a technology of power. There's a dynamic. There's a protocol. You know what the Bible said? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it said the earth was void. Verse 2, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The word is tohu, pohu. That is absolute desolation. But the Bible said, and the Spirit of God hovered upon the face of the deep. The moment the Spirit began to move, it said, God said, God said, as the gospel was going forth, the Holy Ghost began to over. And so anything we say can happen. Anything we declare can happen. Can you lift your right hand toward heaven and begin to change your situation? Change the circumstances. Move atmosphere. A move is about to erupt from here. Aleto Barato. Sida Tatatuna. Pantoria Dakato. There's a move of the spirit. A generation is rising. And listen, we are not talkers. We come to demonstrate the power of God. In Acts 5 12, the Bible said, Many signs did the apostles of Jesus. In verse 15, the Bible said, It was so much that they brought the sick, laid them on the sea, that the shadow of Peter. Imagine that Jesus was laying hands on people. Peter came and said, Wow. What you have done has created a limitless possibility. We don't have to lay hands. Even shadow can get the job done. And Paul showed up and said, we don't have to be there. If we will lay shadow, we have to be there. If we organize crusades, we have to be there. We can send handkerchiefs. And the results that can be achieved in a crusade can be achieved through handkerchiefs. Listen, that is the first generation. How about this generation? How about this era? He said the God's best man is God's last man. If Paul used handkerchief, if Peter used shadow, then there is something that must be invented in the spirit. Is there an angry generation here? Manta, parota, lift your right hand toward heaven. There is a fire about to descend here now. Oh my God. What God dropped here tonight is not a joke. For some of you, it's your deliverance. It's your key to the realm of the miraculous. It's your access to the gate of power. It's your move into a new dimension. Father, in the name of Jesus, can we be quiet for a moment so we can manage time? Hear me. Something is about to drop here. I'm telling you, a new generation is about to emerge from Ghana. We are tired of lectures. We are tired of talking. And as I speak to you now, there is an activation of ordination. He said evangelists are rising. Prophets are rising. Apostles are rising. Wherever you are standing, most of you have been numbered. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come as men sent of God to your people in Ghana. Wherever they are standing now, men who carry ordinations, dimensions of power, dimensions of wonders, miracle workers, wherever they are standing, Lord, I speak now over this movement of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let that fire rest upon them now. Carry that grace. Help them, ushers. Carry them, carry that grace. Carry that grace, carry that grace. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, miracle workers, custodians, in the name of Jesus, carry that grace now. Ah, 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 ah. 
The devil have many troubles. Hey. Listen, these are not cunningly devised fables. These are more sure words of prophecies. He said, "Heaven and earth will pass away, not one jot or tittle." The Lord is telling me now, He is about to launch a generation from this meeting, like the foxes of Samson, to the nations with miracles, signs wonders, notable dimensions of power being demonstrated. I was in Pakistan, sir. When I got to that nation, all they wanted to see was the power of God. They were tired. They had done religion to the highest level. If you talk about oblations, if you talk about rituals, if you talk about rules and regulations, that's all they knew all their life. But they were powerless. They were dying of sicknesses. All they wanted to see is the power of God. You can't be sent without power. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. I know you followed me for three and a half years, but lectures are not enough. You need power to be able to represent God. And that's the generation God is cooking here tonight. Can you lift your hands one more time? Men that will bring nation down to their knees before the cross. Because as they unveil the gospel, the glory of God will manifest. Men that we speak and leaders, kings, presidents, we submit to the mandate of the gospel. These are the men God wants to raise tonight. Father, wherever they are standing, we didn't send ourselves. We were sent here to awaken a generation. Wherever they are standing here, everyone that carries this ordination in the name of Jesus, let that oil begin to drip upon them. From the left to the right, from the front to the back, to the galleries, the oil for the miraculous, the oil for signs, for wonders, the oil for notable miracles. In the name of Jesus, carry that oil now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Apostolic commissioning evangelical commissioning prophetic commissioning pastoral commissioning men that carry dimensions of the spirit some of you will literally want to explode something is bubbling on your inside and i call it forth by the spirit come up here i command those gates to open a father 
Open up. Please have them on the galleries. Belongs to Jesus. Belongs to Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Bring them here. I want the men of God to lay hands on them. You will carry something tonight that you will never recover from. Some of you will run with it for the next 16 years. auditorium with an affliction. I hope you know it's impossible to leave this auditorium with an affliction. Now, wherever you feel any hurt, wherever you have an affliction, lay your hands there now. For most of you, you are already healed. The Holy Ghost is telling me already, somebody towards my left, you have a gastric condition. You have carried that affliction for, for long now. It has left you already. Towards my left here. Who is that person? You are the one. You have a gastric condition. Come. You are already been healed. You will not live here with an affliction. It's impossible. Now, just in case there is something remaining on you, the Holy Ghost is about to deal with it. Towards the back there, I'm seeing somebody that has a hole in the heart. And you, are, you have been having these palpitations and pains on the chest. Towards my right at the back there. Is there anybody like that? You are the one, come on brother, you have been healed. You are not permitted to live here with an affliction. Those devils are living now. They can't stay here. My God. Somebody on this gallery with a tumor, something that looks like a tumor, has just melted on this gallery. Check your body. You have something like a growth. It has left you. As I speak now, it has gone. Check on this gallery. Check on this gallery. Check quickly. I picked that in the spirit just a moment ago. Is there anybody there like that? Check your body quickly. There is something like a tumor in your body that has left you. The Lord is here to touch and to redeem. Who is that one? You are the one, brother. Come down. You have been healed. In the name of Jesus. Now lift your hands toward heaven. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Is there anybody here who believes tonight? Is there anybody here tonight that believes? If I'm talking to believers, shout the loudest hallelujah. Now, hear me. If you couldn't walk, stand up. Certain things don't require prayer. What they need is command. I tell my people, if we have not seen crutches, we have not started. Why did you people come here without crutches? We are the sick people in Ghana. Don't come here tomorrow until any sick person you know is brought here. You will be doing them a great disfavor not to bring them here. But hear me, if you have a bone condition, a muscular condition, stroke, broken bone, muscular, anything it is, stand up now. The power of God is here to heal. And everybody feeling hot in the eye, in the ear, put your hands there. If you have a blood condition, 
or an organ condition, place your hand on your chest. You are not permitted to live here. I just need to receive the loudest amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I take authority over the demons of blindness. Demons of deafness. Demons that afflict the blood, afflict the organ, afflict the bones, and every cell and tissue. Now, hear the word of the Lord. By the power of the gospel and the name of Jesus, we decree and declare, get out of their bodies. Get out of their bodies. Get out of their bodies. Eyes be healed. Ears be healed. Heart be healed. Lungs be healed. Kidneys be healed. Muscles be healed. Bones be healed. I decree and declare, be made whole in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive your healing now. Receive your healing now. Receive your miracle now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout. Jump up. Shout. Do yeah. what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do before. around you see what the Lord has done somebody say I'm not ashamed I'm of not the ashamed. gospel of Christ it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe Show! Yeah. now hear me wherever you are standing if you have noticed the healing the healing run to the altar here we will not take all the testimonies we are out of time but come you are the proof. You know what he said? He said, miracles, signs, and wonders are confirmation that the gospel has been preached. I'm not ministering by an anointing. I'm ministering on the strength of the revelation that he has delivered to us. Where are they? Come up, come up. Where are the people that waved? Come up to the front here. Run to the front here. Run to the front here. From the galleries, down here, run out. Come to the front here. Come on, give me that song again. Hey, uh, 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 uh,
glory to God. The Lord is telling me, there's a lady towards my right here. You've had an eye condition for over two years. The hand of God came upon you. Your eyes have been cleared. You can see now, as I'm talking now, somewhere on my right here. I just speak that now. You have that eye condition. Is there someone like that? Is there someone like that? Is there someone on my right here? You've had an eye condition. You have been healed. And the Lord is telling me now, there's somebody that you are losing mobility on your body. It's like any symptom of stroke. But while the word was going on, the hand of God came upon you. And now you, your body, everything is free. I don't know, is that person here? Is there somebody like that? Hallelujah. Is there somebody? You are the one? You, you had that condition? Come on, brother. You are free. Glory to God. Now, we, we can't take testimonies. I, I, I just showed you so you know that what he was saying is true. It's true. It's true. And the way he presented it, anybody should and can preach the gospel. Tell somebody, I will preach the gospel. I will preach the gospel. And I will see signs and wonders. I will see signs and wonders. Show glory! Never see any God like you. I never see any God like you. Hallelujah. Now, if you are listening to us here tonight, and you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, this package is not for you. You may be very excited, but the first thing the gospel does is to bring you salvation from your sins. Right? So, the best gift you can receive is the gift of salvation. So, you become part of the commonwealth of Israel. Glory to God. So, if you are here and you are not sure you have a relationship with Jesus, it doesn't matter if you were born into a church. It doesn't matter if your father is a bishop. Salvation is a personal thing. And you feel this is the night to make that decision. Can you lift up your right hand? Is there anybody here like that? Even if it's one person, we'll take I know it's more of a believer's convention, but we can't take it for granted. Is there anybody here who wants to make Jesus the Lord of his life? You are, you are there. Come, brother. Clap hands for Jesus. We know. Hear me. When we talk about salvation, there are two major things. We can prove it now that we are, we are children of God. And number two, if the trumpet sounded now, we know where we are going to. It's not in doubt. We know our eternity is secured. So we prove God now, and we are sure our eternity is secured. That's what it means. And if you don't have that yet, this is the best time. The Bible said today is the day of salvation. Don't wait for tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Where are they? Wow. Is there any other person? Clap hands for Jesus. Somebody else is coming. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, join them. We came because of you. I this guy got another one. Oh. of your life. You will enjoy it here and you will celebrate it in eternity. Right? What does it take to be saved? Just believe in your heart and proclaim Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Are you ready to do that? Place your right hand on your chest. It's a sign of surrender, not a ritual. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ. I believe he died for my sins. He was buried and on the third day, he rose again from the dead for my salvation, for my justification. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. 
I receive eternal life into my spirit, I am born again. I repent from my sins. I come into the family of God. Thank you, Father, for having me. In Jesus' name, I have declared. Give the Lord a big hand. The hand of the Lord remain upon you perpetually. The Lord preserve and keep you and make manifest the fullness of salvation in your life. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Can we go that way? Do we have counselors to talk to them? We have counselors. Now, I'm shutting down, but they just want us to hear too, so that you understand what has happened. Just tell two, 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 the power of the gospel. What happened? Just two. I am persuaded that the streets of Ghana will be littered with evangelists from next week. <laughs> because this thing is not church. It's in the market. It's in the office. The reason we have to do crusades is because too many people are not doing the work. When people begin to do the work, every day will be a crusade. You go to your office, you manifest God. You go to the market, you manifest God. I don't know if there's someone here who is about to set Ghana on fire. Quickly, quickly, let's take two, two, yes. Okay, so we have Gideon here, and Gideon, 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 yes, Gideon, Gideon came here cross-eyed. Cross-eyed? Yes, in Ghana, we call it alukmi. You know what one that means? At, uh -huh. One eye is looking here, another yes. one is looking there. And what happened now? He said, as you prayed, he went to check it, the eyes are straight, and I can confirm that. Ah, 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 hey. This guy got another one no oh, the the gospel. I was not even the one that preached. He did the work. I'm just here manifesting. Come on! This guy got another one on the One more. One more. One more. Quickly, what happened? Okay, we have our brother Francis here. Brother Francis. And he came here with severe strains and pains in his neck areas. Mm. He could not even turn his neck. So he... He According to what talk. he told us, yes, it's for him to bend, he had to bend this way. He couldn't move the leg. But Give now, the Lord a big shout of glory! This guy got another one. Apostle, sir, another thing with him is that he came with an eye issue. He says that in any room where the lights are hard, he you cannot look see. At light. But now it's very okay. He Eyes can see everything clearly. God. Glory to God. Can I tell you a secret about evangelists? Hmm? Evangelists come alive when they see crutches. When they see witches. When they see people bedridden. If you want to see the evangelist in his brilliance tomorrow, Go and gather them from everywhere they are in Ghana. It's called a miracle festival. This is not a discipleship conference. How many of you are ready to see the power of God tomorrow? Give the Lord the show! So tomorrow will be a miracle service. The focus is purely on healing, signs, and wonders. Gather the sick, bring them here. Maybe you heard the gospel today, you say, is this true? Go and bring the sick tomorrow. Use it as an experiment to prove the power of the gospel. Are you ready to tomorrow for miracle service? Give the Lord a shout. And the second thing you do tomorrow is spread the word. Don't keep quiet. Every one of us will be a preacher in the course of this meeting. So you begin your preaching by getting at least one more person to this meeting tomorrow. The second gallery is already filled. 
The first gallery is already filled. The second must be filled tomorrow. So we have the sick and we have the multitude here tomorrow for God to manifest his wonders. How many of you are ready to do that tomorrow? How many of you will bring at least one person tomorrow? That's your word with the Lord. Give the Lord a shout of glory as we celebrate God. I'm not, I'm not a one. before we go tonight. Tomorrow night we will let the apostle loose tomorrow. We will let the lion roar tomorrow night. Hallelujah. How many of you were blessed tonight? Were you blessed tonight? Lift up an offering to the Lord. Just lift up an offering. Lift up your offering to heaven. Father, we thank you tonight for the manifestation of your power and your glory. We thank you for the opportunity to sow a seed in a good ground. We thank you for what your word says concerning sowing and reaping. As your word declares that they that sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. I pray that every seed that goes into this good ground at this right time, may it come back to them a hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that wherever someone is in their finances, by the reason of this seed, may this be the lowest they would ever be in the name of Jesus. That from tonight, may they go from glory to glory, from victory to victory, and from strength to strength in Jesus' name. If you receive it, shout, I receive it. starts at 5 p.m. So make sure you are here by 5 p.m. All right, and then we can kick off at 6 p.m. God richly bless you for being here tonight. Those still giving offerings, or yes, you can come in front. There will be an usher here. Please, can we have one of the ashes here? And those still giving your offerings, you can bring it in front. Let's share the grace. Okay, also there is a phone that is missing. Please and 
this and this. If you find any phone that looks like yours, but it's not yours, kindly, kindly see any of the ashes. Kindly see any of the protocol personnel. Shall we share the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. Surely goodness and mercies follow me all the days of my life. I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Have a blessed evening.